Hey, thanks for downloading the show. Welcome to Garden Fork Radio. This is me, Eric, your host. I also have a YouTube channel. We're all about kind of creative how-to DIY ideas. It's all about, hey, let's try this and see what happens. And today, I'm here with my best friend, Rick. Hello, sir. <laughs> good morning, Eric. How are you, my friend? I'm good. We're here to answer uh, a question of where has Rick been? And then we're going to talk about <laughs> a bunch of stuff you can do besides looking at your phone. So um, I'm great. And it's we have been in touch kind of in our back channel talking, but you haven't been on the podcast in a while. And we finally have have synced you, our schedules you you cornered me and i i couldn't avoid it anymore and so i here i am i figured if i uh, called you at dinner i could finally get you on the phone so i interrupted your dinner oh <laughs> uh, yeah um uh, yeah i miss being on you've done some great shows with eric and um and well uh will wallace uh you know you, you've done you've had some good stuff on and it's good to hear different voices and and um for me, I have been all of a sudden incredibly busy. Um, I I did not get, take a job. I'm not that crazy yet. But um, <laughs> you know, I uh, uh, when this all began, this uh, COVID thing, I knew I was going to kind of go stir crazy. And a lot of the listeners here probably might know about a guy named Clay Jenkinson. Uh, he is a, uh, a Jefferson scholar. And he has a radio program called the Jefferson Hour. And you hear it on a lot of PBS stations or NPR stations. And uh, there's also a podcast. And Clay goes around and he portrays Thomas Jefferson in a as realistic as he can make it style. He says the things he, that Jefferson says. And uh, it's part of actually a movement known as the Chautauqua Movement which goes back, uh, you know, uh, maybe almost 150 years now of uh, tent shows where they would take educational programs to the people in the fields mm -hmm. and, and, and whatnot. Uh, and he does a lot of in-person presentations, and that all had to stop because of the COVID thing. And so he says, well, how about if I offer some Zoom classes? And so our first Zoom class was on uh, uh, pandemic literature, and I think the most important thing I learned in that course, which uh, really concentrated on the uh, 18 or 1688 or so uh, pandemic of, um, of London, but also updated with uh, Albert Camus and, and whatnot, is that nothing has changed in the way uh, governments and people react. We're reacting today exactly the way they did in 1688. Wow. <laughs> Which is a little depressing. Um, and then the uh, the next class was on the Enlightenment, and uh, which is a the philosophical grounding for most of the uh, the framey, framers of the Constitution. Uh, the next class was Homer, and so we did the Iliad and the Odyssey. And uh, this last class was on the Constitution, which ended just before the election. And the history of the Constitution, the making of it, um, you know, we really went through in fine detail. And there were 40 to 60 people in each class. And so it, it was a lot of fun. And they were all, of course, listeners to the Thomas Jefferson Hour. And so that's reading and side reading has kept me really busy up until this point. Uh, the classes have stopped for right now. In fact, the Constitution class is so popular that I think he's going to do three more sessions um, uh, beginning in the end of this month. And so, but I've already done that class, so I don't have a class to go to. So you're so like that, a, you're a constitutional scholar now? But not exactly, but I, I have a better grasp of how we got to where we are. And, and that's always a good, uh, always a good thing. So that, that's been keeping me pretty busy. It hasn't been keeping me off the radio. You just never called me because I guess, well, it's, it's, it's over. Uh, I, I don't know. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, that is what, I mean, um, part of the topic of the show here is to walk away from your phone or your mobile iPad device and do something outside, which we'll talk about in the second half of the show. But 
there is the the internet is a horrible place, but the internet is also a beautiful place, and I like to emphasize the beautiful and the fact that someone, uh, a scholarly person with knowledge, can use some off the shelf web available software, essentially, or a platform, and hold the class, and sick forty to sixty people probably around the world watch and learn. Yeah. Yeah. And like, you know, this was an interactive class and we set up um, uh, both a Google classroom, which has its flaws, but also a Facebook classroom, a private group. And that had its flaws. But you know, between the two, uh, between classes, everybody was arguing and talking and, and, and you know, and discussing the books and, and the readings and that kind of stuff. And so it was more than just a class, uh, you know, it was almost all encompassing. You couldn't wait to check in to see what everybody else was talking about and what they were saying. So I could tell them how they were wrong. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, uh, you know, the human body is a wonderful thing, and, but our poor brains, um, uh, are in some ways that part of the brain that says uh, it used to be fight or flight. Now it's freeze, fight or fr flight. Oh, the amygdala? The amygdala is the most underdeveloped part of the brain. And it is the part that keeps us doom scrolling. Uh, it cannot tell the difference. I think I've said this here before. Between the report of a tiger attack in India and a tiger attack in your neighborhood. It, it, it registers the same alarm in your brain and, and, and it keeps you spun up. Yep. And yeah, it's what they play on. Uh, if you watch any of the newscasts, not just one in particular, they play on that. These big oversized heads talking seriously in a deep sonorous voice voice the uh, red chirons flashing across the bottom uh the dramatic music you know it's all it's not geared to your regular brain it's not geared to your eyes it's geared to your amygdala and they're pinpointing it and they're sticking a pin in it to make it react and squirt out more amygdala juice i don't even know what what it squirts out <laughs> and and to keep you in a state of anxiety and if you can't break that lizard brain which is what it is um part of the cycle uh they will keep you trapped in doom scrolling forever and our goal is to break that chain right here right now that's right that's right uh, I tell you, uh, the, the first thing I do, and it's not, we have a list here. It's, uh, uh, a great article from Washington an, post, the Washington post. And I can't find the author's name, the authors here. They are, uh, Elizabeth Hart and, uh, Suzette Moyers. And they're, they're actually both designers and art people from the, uh, Washington post. Uh, but the, the first thing, my first rule for myself is every morning at the top of the hour, I listen to the uh, NPR five-minute news. And I and I make sure that that's all I listen to and, for the entire day, unless something's going on. I mean, you know, if there's war you know, close to my house or something, I might listen a little more. Yeah. But, you know, and then I put it away because nothing happens in a 24-hour cycle that they can't condense and, and talk about uh, in five minutes to give you an overview of what's happening in the world and then turn your attention to something that's useful and productive and that you can actually do something about. Yeah, I have some uh, older neighbor friends and mm -hmm. whenever I go over there, the news is on. And I think it's background noise, yeah. but it's also in a way kind of burrowing into their brain, you know? <laughs> Oh, sure. You know, that's one reason uh, uh, many, almost a decade ago, we cut the cable. Uh, our news, uh, we have Verizon Fios internet service, 
And from that, we, uh, uh, because it was the first one, we bought into the Apple system. You got to have a box of some sort to interface mm -hmm. with your TV. Uh, and so, you know, Roku, Apple, there, there are any number, uh, the Fire Stick, Amazon Fire Stick. Uh, that was until they developed uh, internet ready TVs. But what it made us was intent. We had to intentionally watch TV. It yes. couldn't blare in the background because there was nothing on unless we, you know, fired up the boxes and clicked and then around. it wouldn't be you know, clicked around. It, but it wouldn't be news, and that has helped us a lot in this house too. Um, uh, because I've got a neighbor down the street, my best friend Jimmy. Uh, you're my second best friend, Eric. Okay. Thank you. But you're getting close. You keep working at it, and you know, you ingratiate yourself. Send me some more stuff, and maybe maybe you move up. But but Jimmy down the street, uh, you know, blessing me, he, he's got that cable news on in two different rooms. He has a, a a TV in the in the kitchen. He has a TV in his living room. They're both on the same cable news network, and it is the background of his life. Uh -huh. And I can't take that. No, neither can I. But there are some cool, uh, there are some cool things to do in this uh, article. I subscribe to an email newsletter from the Washington Post uh, about optimism. They write articles about stuff that's going, good stuff that's going on in the world. Right. And I love that. Um, and it, it's just, you know, somebody... I think I talked about one a while back where uh, the woman made signs telling people that they are loved because she was alarmed by the amount of teen suicide in her town. And right. she went to the local you know, vinyl sign company in the strip mall and said, can you just make up some signs that say you are loved? You know, uh, several other phrases. And so this article comes from that same email newsletter. So I'll link to the email newsletter I get, but there's, you know, I, I, I did the same kind of thing, except mine was uh, give money. Yes. And I, I, well, and I, I put my address down in case they wanted to stop by with a 10 or a 20 and it, it didn't, it didn't work, but I bet you are loved works a lot better. <laughs> stop and give me money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think there's like 52 of them here and we're going to, kind of cherry pick because some of them I have because I'm culturally current culture clueless um, like the number one thing is watch the new Pixar movie Soul which I have no idea what that is I don't either now I know about Bridgerton the next number two is Bridgerton uh, it is uh, what I call a corset drama and she who must be obeyed loves these things uh, it is somewhat accurate, but watch it for uh, as far historically accurate. Uh, but watch it for the the uh, scenes, the dresses, the backgrounds, the you know the the stories. Uh, apparently, there's a lot of S E X in it. I don't know, um, but I I've heard that. And so, uh, but it you know it's it's something to you know be absorbed in. And, um, uh, and that's for us, that's the most important thing of any TV. We, it's kind of our little ritual at night. We find something and we, we try to be absorbed in it to get out of ourselves in this world. Cool. The next three things are all related, but, uh, on second thought, it says read a book, check one out digitally and assemble a virtual book club, which I love all three of those. Uh, I've been yeah. using the resources, the online resources of the Brooklyn Public Library more and more. And you can read books and magazines using a couple different apps. And you have to start with a library card and you type in the library cards, your membership number, and probably some kind of key code. And then all of a sudden you have this access to the library plus this whole world, which I really like. Yeah. You know, one of the things most people don't realize about their library card is if you're doing hardcore research and you're hitting a lot of uh, scientific or uh, social science journals, uh, your library card actually gets you past almost every firewall. And so you can read those uh, high-end articles if you need to, if you're re uh, taking an interest in something very, very specific and high level. 
you know, book club is always an interesting thing. One of the problems, because women discriminate against men so much, uh, is, is it's almost impossible to find a book club that allows men. Hmm. Uh, I, I, and I, it's funny because I, I've kind of checked around in the past for book clubs. And, uh, of course this course I was taking, these courses were essentially book clubs, uh, in a lot of ways, but it's really tough for guys to find book clubs. We're going to hear from people on that one. So it's radio at gardenfork.tv. <laughs> so we're going to find Rick a book club. The next three year. Uh, next four are all very similar. Take a walk, listen to this podcast, go on a hike or train for a 5k. And I clicked on the link for the podcast and it is, um, uh, so it's called take a walk from pop-up magazine. And it is noted podcasters and radio hosts and authors telling stories geared for while you're walking. It's oh, called take, take a walk. It's available on, uh, it should be on most podcasts app. So, yeah. Wow. You know, um, and certainly there are podcasts that have nothing to do with, um, with politics or the, the current situations out there that are a lot of fun to listen to. Uh, one of my favorites is, uh, LeVar Burton reads. You remember, yes. uh, what reading rainbow? Well, same, same guy. Yes. And Mr. Or, Star Trek. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jordy on, uh, on Star Trek, but one, he has a wonderful voice and wonderful style and he reads, uh, some fascinating stuff. Uh, the New Yorker fiction is a, uh, a great one. There are some, um, oh, I'd have to go. I'm now I'm blanking, uh, say something smart while I'm, I'm looking. Oh. Well, another one is they're talking about donate your time to a cause. And this follows through with a while ago, I was talking about donate money to your local food pantry. You could also donate your time to a food pantry by delivering food to people that need it. Uh, locally, you can walk with your grocery cart or you could use your car to do that. So, Okay. I found the two I was th trying to think of and I, I blanked on them. I like a lot of people have radio freeze. As soon as the microphone comes on, I can't think of anything. <laughs> uh, one is the mortified podcast and it's adults reading their teenage diaries on stage. Yes. <laughs> it, yeah. it is. It is so funny. Uh, you know, and, and you, it's so relatable. And the other is the moth, which are perfect, not professional, but amateur storytellers getting up on stage. And so you get the stage reaction, you get the, the, uh, audience reactions from it. it. It's really a lot of fun. Um, so I just wanted to, you know, there, there are many, many podcasts that have absolutely nothing to do with politics, uh, that have to do with, uh, uh, an eclectic DIY kind of thing. I, I've heard of this place. It's, I think it's called Garden Fork. It's a wonderful podcast to listen to when you're on a long walk. Yeah. I know some people are walking right now listening to us. Would you be interested in kind of the behind the scenes and inside the mind of Eric and what goes on to make the podcast and the videos? You can do that if you want to support Garden Fork, the YouTube channel, and our podcast here. You can become a Garden Fork patron. Uh, it starts at $5 a month, which is, what, a nice cup of coffee? And for that, you get stuff updates, every stuff. How's that for a word? Basically, uh, through the Patreon app and email, I post things that I don't post to Facebook or Instagram or include in the email newsletter. Uh, it's an after show for almost every podcast, plus photos and little screen grabs of projects I'm interested in, or stuff that I find interesting that um, I kind of just want to share with people that are part of the core group, people that know who I am and, and I know who you are. And um, it's a cool group of people. I wonder if you want to be a part of it. Uh, there's information below about signing up or you can go to patreon.com slash garden for it. All right. Thank you. 
Um, I'm going to skip over a couple and move on to practice your smile, your posture, meditate, study psychological first aid, get a great massage, um, or practice your downward dog with Adrian. Um, if you want to learn how to meditate, the Headspace app is I am uh, a convert to the Headspace app. The, the, the lessons are really easy. It made... It made it so much easier for me than me trying to learn how to meditate from a book or something. Um, very easygoing. Posture I'm working on. Smile. I, when I go outside and I'm in public, I, I try and smile and it actually works because people kind of have the scowl face on. Like even in a grocery store, yeah. I'm just like, hey, you know, yeah. maybe that's because yeah. I'm from Wisconsin. You know, well, you know, I, I, I smile a lot. You know, and I, I speak to people and nod to them when I see them. I wave and, you know, holler out, you know, hi, neighbor, even if I don't know who they are. Uh, you know, it just loosens the um, because everybody's kind of hunched over and, and afraid they're about to be attacked or something. And it's just good to, to do that. And, and the other thing to do, and it has changed my life more than I can say. Is our friendship. It, that's it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's learning to say, and I had to train myself. It took a long time. When somebody says, how are you? I say never better. I never complain. I never elaborate. I say, you're never better. And which is true. I mean, I, I woke up on this side of the grass. I'm never better. Uh, but it's amazing how that affects people. They say, really, you know, or I've had people, I, I did it at the autometrist office here a while back. And, uh, uh, a woman came out of the, uh, an office in the back. She was a clerical worker. She says, I heard that that is wonderful. And, uh, the, the truth is I got it from Hermione Granger in the very first Harry Potter film, but it, it works like a champ and it, um, you know, it, it, instead of saying, oh, you know, I'm okay, or I'm doing fine, or, or you know, eh, man, you know how it is. Just make it a point of always saying never better. And it improves your outlook on things, because really, in many ways, uh, life is never better than it is right now. Um, and if people really... Um, you know, push me on it. And they said, never better. Are you kidding? Yeah. And I say, well, yeah, it's been kind of a crappy life. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you make a joke out of that. So, well, it's uh, been never better that, um, some really great medical expert people have come up with a vaccine in nine months that usually takes four years. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I am so impressed by the medical system and Dolly Parton who financed it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and, and the rest of us who helped finance some of it. I know, but I just love that story that Dolly Parton, uh, Dolly Parton is friends with Jad Abenrod's father, who was a doctor. And Jad Abenrod is uh, a big podcaster, NPR guy. And she was in a car accident and Dr. Abunrod helped with her treatment and they became friends and then Dr. Abenrod was helping with the coronavirus thing. And he said, well, we're raising money to do this research. And she wrote him a check. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I wish Dolly would stop by here. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, let me see. What else? Where, where did we leave off? Tour we're assisting good. chapel. That, that might be a little tough. I wanted to just touch on uh, Downward oh. Dog with, with Adrian, which is uh, – Yoga with Adrian is a really great uh, entry yoga channel, and I continue yoga. And uh, the camera operator and I were like, she said, oh, I'd like to do some yoga. Is there something on YouTube? And I said, I know exactly the person, because Adrian uh, has, she started her own yoga channel, and I know her producer, who oh. is the camera tech person. Uh, you know, SEO data guy behind the scenes. And I just like yoga with her. Cause she's like talking about we're, we're looking toward our stomachs and holding our stomachs in. And she's like, Oh, and I have some, uh, a toothpaste stain on my shirt. Nice. And you're like, <laughs> it immediately makes her so much more approachable 
than some very together yoga person who is just, you know, concentrate on your form, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> very, very much a garden fork kind of attitude toward it all. So yeah, yeah. I've noticed some stains on your shirt too, but I haven't said anything. That's middle age. Uh, it just yeah. really is middle age. Yeah. Um, you skipped over the most important one though. Which one? Check, check in with your dog. Yes. <laughs> Dogs bring me so much joy, and um, yeah, I, I take them uh, to the dog park. I, I I let them run free in the dog park, and I walk about two or three miles around the perimeter of the dog park while they're doing whatever dogs do. But uh, just having them around, uh, a little buddy to jump in the car with you and go someplace, uh, uh, checking in with your dog is probably the most important part of my life. Yeah, my... Younger labs check in with me by pouncing on the bed at 6 a.m. Pause first. Ah, <laughs> ah, they're it, not allowed at bed until the morning. And then they're like, okay, it's morning. <laughs> and you're like, oh. and so you have to cover your face because <laughs> they just land. Oh. <laughs> Makes you happy. Yeah. Light a candle, light a fire, light it all on fire. If you want to build a fire pit, there is a new Garden Fork uh, YouTube video about that, how to build a stone fire ring in your yard i thought i thought this was about being a pyromaniac but oh, oh okay i get it yeah <laughs> step one it, is it, to get your friend to move all the rocks let me tell you that i noticed that how did you do that my friend alex has is one of those guys with non-stop energy yeah and you just got to focus it yeah he loves fire you, so <laughs> i just had now i did not do this myself because I thought, oh, it's going to be too much trouble and, and, you know, my hand hurts and all this other stuff. And I had a, uh, a patio put in and I thought about pouring cement, but instead we used pavers mm -hmm. and uh, I hired these guys to, uh, create me a, uh, a 10 by 20 ish patio with pavers in a herringbone, uh, pattern. Yep. And, you know, prepping the ground was really easy. Um, then, of course, you, you put down a, 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 a level of coarse sand, then level of fine sand, and then you level it all off and you start setting your pavers. And I said, even I could have done that. Yep. It is the easiest way uh, to build something like that over time because uh, you don't have to do it all at one time. This we had trouble coordinating because this area is kind of swampy in my yard. Mm -hmm. And so it, it needs to be sort of dry when they're doing this, but it, it, we came out with this beautiful, uh, uh, patio, uh, for my barbecue pit and a little table to set out there and whatnot. And it looks great. And it's something that looking back on it now that I've seen how easy it, you know, it's always helpful to watch somebody do something. And then yes. go do it yourself. Yes. This was I much this. easier than me pouring concrete, which was my first thought was go buy one of those, um, uh, uh, who the Mixers? Uh, Harbor, Harbor tool places and Harbor buy Freight. their Harbor Freight. That's it. And buy one of their, um, uh, mixers that has the, the plastic tub and stuff. This was so much easier. And so much more doable in stages. So you uh, you could do a piece and then let it go two or three days, do another piece, you know, uh, that I, I am sold on pavers. Yes. Also, they drain better. Uh, you don't. Well, up here, you don't have a frost heave. Your cement, you know, cement slabs crack all the time. They chip. Right. Um, this old house, the TV show, has a YouTube channel and they have a very good video on how to lay down pavers talking about the prep, putting down coarse stone or coarse sand and then fine sand, uh, tamping down the sand then laying in your brick or, or stone, and then using trap rock dust between the pavers and brushing that in. Right. Uh, really, really wow. well done. You've got this down. Well, it's probably in my future. Uh, I, don't, I don't like to talk about stuff before it happens, so I'm still thinking about mm. it, but... Well, and then, uh, yeah, we actually had enough pavers left over that I could do. Um, and I did this myself. I'm very proud. Uh, a little, uh, trash can pad Perfect. on the side, on the side of the house on the front. So, um, 
uh, you know, it, it was relatively easy to do. Uh, you can only, and you know, if, if you're lacking a lot of strength, you can just wheelbarrow a, you know, a few pavers at a time. You don't have to do 500. Uh, it really um, is something that you can do on a part-time basis to uh, improve your property, uh, improve your quality of life, because I'm really going to enjoy sitting out on those pavers uh, on my on my little deck now. So I, I think it's a, it's a great project. It's a great DIY. If I had a friend who had a DIY video program, I'd suggest that he do something like this. But you know. <laughs> big hint. All right, so we're we're at our thirty minute mark. So maybe we'll skip through uh, some of the higher numbers here. I have a couple I'd like to talk about, and then you want to pick some, Rick? Okay, uh, you go ahead. Um, exercise, get blood flowing, do thirty jumping jacks. Yes, um, Headspace. The Headspace app has a health section with really great exercise routines that are geared for not just, you know, super buff people from California, but for the rest of us. I want to suggest here is lift some barbells. I would suggest resistance bands with the handles instead of that. And there is a great YouTube channel by a couple, uh, Jen and DJ. It's called... ACHV peak. So achieve peak, but take out the vowels. A C H V space peak. They have fantastic videos. They have short ones, they have long ones, and they're all based on resistance bands. Resistance bands are a replacement for a gym. I actually quit I quit. I left my gym membership because I realized in my basement I could use resistance bands and I didn't have to go anywhere and it didn't cost anything. And I'm more likely to do it because it's right in the basement. Right. Yeah. You know, some of these, uh, of course, here, this is a real garden fork one. Season that cast iron. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that, it's not that's, rocket that's, science, man. That's you. You wrote this. It's science, uh, actually. Then there are some that are or- organize your nightstand drawer, organize your closet, organize lit- literally everything. And this is what my wife does. She organizes me on a daily basis. This is how she keeps her sanity. There's, um, I am actually organizing my uh, basement of our apartment in Brooklyn. And it became, during the renovation, kind of a dumping ground for all my construction gear. And I had to open a bunch of holes in the basement ceiling. And I made the mistake. I'll back up. I... When I was a contractor, one of the apartments we were working on, the the woman asked me to assemble a bunch of, it's called Tefla wire racks and stuff, their closet organizing system. And she worked with her architect. And I'm like, how did you figure this out? She goes, we started by going through all my clothes and measuring my clothes. And then we figured out what organizational gizmos we needed. And that went right out my head. And then I went and bought a bunch of clear plastic containers from Ikea, thinking I was going to organize my basement. And I realized I didn't need these giant clear containers. I needed small little cubby kind of stackable bins to organize them. So figure out what you're going to organize. Think about how you're going to organize it and then go shopping. You know, um, I've actually thought about doing that for my closet. I have a uh, small very old chest of drawers, you know, underwear, t-shirts, that kind of stuff. And, uh, everything else hangs. And I've thought about putting that up the, the bare backside of the closet and and freeing up that rod space, which is where it sits underneath my chest of drawers. And I've, I've thought about trying to do something like that. Uh, but then I realized that in truth, I only had, um, our closet is maybe 10 feet deep. And so there are two 10 foot rods. I only own about three foot of rod and the rest of that rod belongs to my wife because she's already overflowed from her closet into Uh mine and also the closet in the hall and the closet in the two bedrooms. And so, uh, I I'm afraid to free up any more rod space just in case she wants it. But, uh, it's still it, it, the idea of, uh, the wire baskets, you know, letting air flow, uh, through your, um, uh, 
uh, you know, through your clothes and, and, and things not being so locked up. Then it's just as easy to find something in a wire basket as it is in a, uh, a dark old uh, uh, stuffy uh, uh, chest of drawers. So I've, I've thought about doing that. <laughs> the last two are uh, treat yourself with a cocktail or with some brownies. And I like both of those. Yeah, boy, I love brownies. <laughs> I, I, I used to love the cocktail thing. I've, I, uh, I don't know if anybody, I've told anybody I quit drinking. So Good for uh, you. Just couldn't. Well, I've lost 60 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen that. I've seen that with my friends that quit drinking. Yep. Yeah. Uh, as much as I loved it, and uh, you know, even if it's not out of control, um, it you got to work really hard to uh, to get rid of those calories. So. so it's not on the list, but I think both of us would agree uh, to get people to buy a bike or an electric bike. Oh, yeah. I, my neighborhood has begun to look like Amsterdam. Yay. Every, everyone is on a bike, and particularly uh, uh, the golden hour right here, uh, about 4.30 to 5.30 or 6. Um, everyone is out just pedaling around the, our our subdivisions built on a circle one mile circle and everyone is out peddling uh, a few walking their dogs a few putting their dogs in baskets and riding them around on the bicycle uh but it's it's one of the great things about this pandemic is it's gotten people out of the house and just into the society of our neighborhood uh so we're seeing each other and and saying hi and even if you don't feel like uh you know, biking, people are sitting out in the garage in a chair, maybe having a, a, a cocktail and uh, waving and talking to people as they go by. But uh, a bicycle is a wonderful uh, way to get around. I'm learning. I, I am cold adverse. I, I admit I, I hate the cold. Yep. Uh, it's not that cold in Virginia Beach. Uh, in fact, today is supposed to be pretty nice, I think. But I'm averse to being cold, but I'm, I'm learning how to gear up and suit up and, and uh, you know, put on the earmuffs and, and, and all the things I do so I can get on the bike and go do some exercise and, and, uh, and free my mind a little bit. There, you know, wind blowing through your hair, let me tell you, Rick's hair is getting long. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I made a kind of a, a bet, I promised to myself, I said, I'm not going to get a haircut until this uh, pandemic is over and it's almost to the point in the back where I can braid it. So where she who must be obeyed can braid it. Wow. Uh, got a, got a ponytail. If you, if you had hair, you could do the same thing. Thank you, Rick. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So Rick and I are going to stick around for a minute to do a little after show for the garden fork patrons. Uh, you can learn more about becoming a supporter garden fork in the show notes here, but, um, I think that was a really great list there. I really appreciate you taking the time, sir. Oh, you bet. Uh, I, I love these lists of because, uh, boy, people, you can get stuck and you can get stuck in your own mind. And, um, you know, you, you got to make an effort to do it, to, to get out of that mindset and, and go do something else. Because in truth, uh, nothing's really going to fall apart. And there is no doom just right over the corner, around the corner over the horizon not so, as long as there's garden fork radio that's right yeah we keep people steady and straight <laughs> true and honest yeah. all right radio at gardenfork.tv <laughs> want to hear your thoughts on our show thank you everybody it's good to hear your voice again my friend talk to you later bye bye garden fork radio is produced in brooklyn new york by garden fork media llc our executive producer is Jimmy Gooch. You can learn more about Jimmy and the custom hollow books he makes at hollowbooks.com. The music for our show is licensed from audioblocks.com and uniquetracks.com. Music.